Parts 1 to 4 of this series showed electrothermal analyses of a printed circuit board with ANSYS SI Wave and ANSYS Ice Pack. In the next two parts, we'll perform a structural analysis of the same PCB design using ANSYS Workbench to link the electrothermal results to ANSYS Mechanical. This video will show you how to set up those links. When creating the Workbench project, we'll need Ice Pack as the source of temperature data and heatsink geometries. We'll use SpaceClaim to prep the geometry data for ANSYS Mechanical. That includes a process called trace mapping, which converts the detailed ECAD geometry of the metal layers on the board, stored in an ODB++ database, into a representation suitable for mechanical analysis. Finally, we'll show how ANSYS Workbench can be used to bring the ECAD data and thermal data into mechanical in preparation for the structural analysis. It's critical to model the mechanical properties for a PCB, because changes in temperatures can cause stress and deform the board. This can degrade the reliability of the system. For example, when you attach a package to a PCB, thermal deformation can stress the solder joints and even crack them, causing open circuits or intermittent errors. High concentrations of heat can damage a PCB in a variety of ways. A properly designed PCB can not only be resistant to such damage, but can also be a work of art. Designing a PCB is a creative endeavor requiring solutions to multiple engineering problems. To solve complex mechanical problems of the board, we'll use a simple pallet approach. We'll see how this approach facilitates our solution. Just as we gather a palette of colors for a work of art, in the same way we need to fulfill some simple requirements a priori for doing a structural analysis on the board. Colors in this palette are analogous to these requirements. They include obtaining temperature data, preparing the geometry and ECAD data, and setting up materials for the board. Gathering these requirements is very easy. We begin by obtaining the temperatures. Open the solved ice pack project that has the natural convection results. Go to Post, Workflow Data, CFD Post Mechanical Data. This command writes out CFD data and automatically generates a .loads file in the results folder. The loads file includes temperatures for the entire board, including its components, heat sinks, and even the surrounding cabinet. Columns in the loads file are the XYZ coordinates and recorded temperatures in Kelvin at each point. We'll return to this ice pack session later on. For now, minimize this ice pack window and launch Workbench. Drag and drop an ice pack component system into the project. To easily identify this system, rename it to Temperatures. Right-click the Setup cell. Since the thermal solution exists, go to Import Ice Pack Project, Browse, and include the subdirectory under the Results folder, where the loads file exists. Workbench launches a new ice pack session with the solutions in its working directory. So this actually verifies that Workbench was able to read in the ice pack solution. You can close this session. Since the results exist, the solution cell is automatically updated in Workbench. After gathering temperatures, we'll prepare the MCAD geometry and ECAD data. While we can use SpaceClaim to import the board, if we want to include the heat sinks, we'll also need ice pack. This is because the original ODB++ directory does not contain heat sinks. Bring forward the minimized ice pack window. We'll eliminate what we don't need by deactivating the board and the bounding walls. Export the objects and their heat sinks as a step file. Since the loads file is already available, we can ignore these warning messages. Quit the ice pack session without saving. Launch SpaceClaim to add the board and heat sinks. Open the SpaceClaim options window to check the ECAD file options. Ensure that the import mode is set to layer topology. Because the ECAD data for the board contains a vast amount of detail about trace geometries that isn't needed for mechanical analysis, we want the board to be treated as a layer topology, and the rest of the objects and heat sinks to be treated as full 3D MCAD geometry. Our original PCB design came from an ODB++ directory, so we'll convert this directory into a .tgz file for SpaceClaim. You can use any archiving software. In this case, we'll use 7-zip. This step is not required if the PCB is already available in an archive form. We'll change the extension to tgz and make sure the archive format is tar. This operation creates the .tgz file as shown. We'll drag and drop this tgz file into SpaceClaim. And add the heat sinks now. Press Escape. Select PCB from the structure tree. Verify that SpaceClaim read in the ECAD file as a share topology by viewing the properties window. Eventually, when we import the SpaceClaim model into ANSYS Mechanical, the Share Topology option for the board will ensure that the mesh in Mechanical is connected for all of the board layers.
do not set the other objects and heat sinks to share topology because they'll be addressed in mechanical with contact. Contact is a way of bonding parts together in mechanical. Expand PCB and uncheck components. This will hide the component footprints. Select all the cabinet faces, right click and delete. Hide the PCB layers. The heat sinks from ice pack are exported as surfaces, so each heat sink is made up of a collection of faces. We need to treat the heat sinks as solid objects in ANSYS Mechanical, so we'll combine these faces into solids. The board data also includes component footprints, which are only meaningful to electrical CAD. To keep them from appearing in Mechanical, ensure they are deselected. Save this file. You'll import this file into ANSYS Mechanical shortly. Now let's create the metal fraction data from the ECAD data for the board. In Workbench, add a new external data component system and call it Layer Metalization. Double-click the setup cell, browse to the odb.tgz file and include it. Here the system assigns the identifier File1 for the imported file. You can select units of your choosing as desired. Now go to the project schematic. Right-click Setup and click Update. Next we'll add a static structural system into the project. Right-click the geometry cell and import the space claim file. Edit the model cell to verify that Mechanical read in the space claim model correctly. Expand Connections to check the contacts. Verify there are five contact regions, one for each object under its heatsink. Finally, include the materials from the library. To do this, double-click Engineering Data. Delete the unused structural steel. Go to Engineering Data Sources. Click General Materials. Add Aluminum Alloy 6061, Copper Alloy, and FR4. Aluminum and copper are commonly used for heat sinks. Copper is a better conductor of heat than aluminum. But if weight and cost are issues, pick aluminum. Now all the requirements are met. You may have noticed the pallet itself is analogous to Workbench. At this point, you are ready to set up the board for structural analysis. Tune in to Part 6 to watch Structural Simulation and Post-Processing.